down ball the ball over the net. Because if not, it's considered a bat for a cat. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, the block does not count as one of the three contacts. So if I go up to block the ball and it hits my team or hits my fingers, that does not count as one of the three. So I still have the three contacts to take that over. So if you're up that up official and it touches my hands, then that's okay. I still have my three contacts. Okay. I love the speech. Yeah. You can accomplish a contact. Did you guys know that? No. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Just more well, beach doubles. Beach doubles. Beach sixes, it doesn't. Now, this says no earrings, small breasts, and bobby pins. Uh, they did change the rule last year that jewelry is allowed. So some teams may be wearing jewelry. I know we talked about it last year. We're okay with like stud earrings. Right, that's what we talked about, but like necklaces, hoop earrings, anything that's going to be potentially dangerous that could get caught on a hand or something, we're not going to wear it. Um, now, other teams might. Now, if you have some girl wearing like a bunch of jewelry hanging down, you may say, hey, that's a, that's a hazard, you need to take it off. Um, no Apple watches, no Fitbits, no bracelets, you don't want anything that's going to mess up your passing platform or anything like that. Earrings are okay. As long as they're not the hoops and you're not going to get that ripped out of your ear while you're diving for a ball. Okay? Um, but like I said, you're going to see some teams that's a little bit different. That's up to each club's discretion is whether or not what type of jewelry you wear and if you get to do that. Okay? Um, you do have to wear shoes when you are officiating. I know how easy it is. We want to take our feet out of our safety shoes and give them a break. Um, if you do that, you do have to wear your slides or whatever, Crocs or whatever the heck it is you guys like to wear anymore. Um, I don't think so. Um, you do have to have a loud whistle, whistle. You see crisp, stern whistle, and a confident whistle. So I'm going to show you an example so you don't want your uh, ears hurt hold your ears. Okay? So a lot of times if you put your tongue here and then stop it with your tongue again, it's real short, crisp. Okay, but again, if we're going, can you hear that? Okay, there are going to be a lot of tournaments that we're going to be at. You've got courts all around you. And so you need to be real assertive and firm with that whistle so your court knows what you're doing. Okay? Now, I we like the Fox 40. It's probably one of the best whistles to use. Now, if you've got like a recess whistle with a little ball in it, those are pretty quiet. I think, I mean, you can buy a Fox 40 at Walmart, I think, for like $5. They're not very expensive. Um, but that's probably the best whistle. It doesn't hurt your jaws as you keep keep it in there. So it's, it's real light, things like that. Um, if we go to the pre-match, we're going to move on to our next section. This is before the game starts. Captains introduce themselves, and then, so you're just saying introduce yourselves. Um, you're going to introduce yourself as the up rep and the down rep, whichever one is going to be doing which job. You're going to kind of go over the ground rules. This is the outline. This is because sometimes you get to courts and there's all kinds of lines. You need to make sure that everyone understands that this is that perimeter volleyball court line. This is our center line. Um, sometimes if there's something up above it, above the court, you know, if it touches it and comes back down on your side, you all have heard some of these ground rules. Like if it touches the wall, it's a dead ball. Um, a lot of times basketball goals, those sort of things. So we'll explain that. And your coaches, a lot of times before tournaments, will have a coaches meeting, and the tournament director will explain the ground rules. So we as coaches will relay that information to you, and it's your job to let all the other teams and just remind them what's going on. Okay? Uh, you need to explain how many points are going to be. So use a pool play two sets to 19 points. When you get to bracket play, um, two sets to 25 is the third set to 15 most of the time. I think championship can be to 25, right? Um, so you'll just have to explain what's going to happen in the game. Now everybody knows if it gets to point 19, it's the end of the game. If point 25 is the end of the game. Uh, when you go up to flip the coin, a lot of teams ask you to choose. So like we always have like a, well, we're supposed to a sign. Yes, right. I know. A lot of teams, yeah, um, yeah, that's fine. So if Bailey's the up breath, she's going to say, hi, I'm Bailey, I'm the up breath. So, hi, I'm Coach Bailey. I'm going to be your up official. 
you're going to be heads, you're going to be tails. I'm going to flip it up and I'm going to catch it. Now it's important when you catch it just to show what it was. We don't flip the coin over. Okay? So if we, I'm going to try this and we're going to see if I can do it. So if we go up, flip it over, it is tails, you've got serve, you've got receive. So when we do that, you will just tell them. Now I will say you're going to go to tournaments and there's going to be people that do it wrong, but we're going to be the team that does it correctly. Okay, so you just tell them, your heads, your tails. Okay, you toss it up, catch it, whatever that is, you show both teams, make sure you show it. Okay. Um, One thing I do too, like I said before I flip it, I give myself a little disclaimer. If I drop it, I'll do it again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I flip it, you know, and then try to catch. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then who gets served first, whatever we, on. So like serve and receive, who, are not, who, who takes uh, court first? The serving team will take the court first. So this is back, if you play high school volleyball or junior high volleyball, club ball's backwards. So in club ball, if you win serve, so like this side win serve, you're going to be on the court first for four minutes. You would take it, the, the non-serving side would take the court the second four minutes. Your warm-up is 2-4-4. Four, four. So your first two minutes is shared. So both teams can be on the court doing their warm-ups. Um, and then at four minutes, you're going to blow your whistle. The serving, or serving side would come on, do their hitting or whatever their warm-up is. The other team will be off. They're not allowed to pepper off to the side or anything like that. Most of the time, what we do is we line up and we help shag balls. Um, just being good um, competitors. So then after that four minutes is up, the other team would take on uh, their side, they do their warm up, then we'd start getting in our lineups and the game would start. Okay, do you have any questions over that part? Okay. Um, the other part is, oh, that's why we assign the heads and tails is that way they're not calling it in the air. And that's different too, which, well, this year wasn't different because this year it was home team was right. serving. So anyway, you don't turn over the coin, serving team gets first four minutes, off team cannot pepper or pass, and then this says check teams for jewelry, but again, it is important to check, just that way we know that there's not going to be some kind of hazard, okay? Um, next calls in center line. This is a little bit different than school ball. School ball is if you touch that center line with your foot or anything like that, or you're in the net, it's automatically dead ball, it's a fault. Club ball's not exactly like that. So contact with the net by a player between the antennas during action of the play is a fault. So if they are making a play on the ball and they're in the net, then it is the other team's point. Okay? A player can be in the net if they are not playing the ball or a part of the play. So like say my setter is setting the ball to my middle, but my right side's a goofball and brushes the net, she's not trying to make a play on the ball, it's okay. But if my middle were to go up and hit and she dragged her whole arm through the net because she's making a play on the ball, it is a fault. Does that make sense? So a lot of times, if your hair flips into the net or you brush it, I know sometimes if the, the setter is tight on the net and you're in the net, then that would be a fault because you're trying to set the ball. Um, Blocking. If you're making a block on the ball and you come down, it's a fault. But if you're just kind of off and you brush the net, it's okay. If you're confused on that, are we good? Okay. Um, hair does not count as part of being in the net. Your hair can touch the net, it's okay. A player can lose balance and fall into the net and it be legal as long as she is not a part of the play or no act of playing the ball. It's the same thing. If you're tripping and you're clumsy and you brush into the net, it's okay. Okay, it happens. Um, center line violations are completely over the line. So if your whole foot is over the line, then that's a fault. They can't step on the line. Okay? So if they're making that contact on the line, it's okay. But if they're underneath, then it's a fault. I'm going to draw a picture. Be right, because this one's confusing. All right, so the line itself has thickness, right? It's about, I don't know, three and a half inches or something, right? The line itself has thickness. Okay, well, hopefully they can see that. Let's say this is a foot. Now this is our side, our side, okay? Is that a violation? No. Is this a 
violation. Yes. No. Your whole foot has to be on the other side. This is still okay. You guys see that? Which one is it? That one's okay. That one's okay. So their foot is on the other side. You guys see that? You like my foot? Yeah. All right. Is this a violation? No. What happens if she goes all the way here and she's a setter? And she's set and then she lifts up her heel and makes a pivot. And then her little pivot is completely on that side of the mat. Yes. Violation? Yes. 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 So center, set, land, drag. Yeah. You pick up that foot and it lands over here. Perfect. Yep. And it's completely over. If I go like this, is that a violation? Yes. yes. You guys get it? So this one right here, that happens. That happens a lot. And then they'll argue about it, but like you pick your heel up, turn around, and your toe is all the way over on the other side. Got it? Setters, I'll smart it. Okay. <laughs> all right, any questions on the net calls and, and the center line violation? Okay, you'll have lots of questions on, on your, your tests and stuff, and you'll have videos to watch that'll help you practice making those calls. All right, so now let's talk about the up rep. This is called referee one. You have R1, up rep, first referee. Um, so before you climb on the stand, you need to have card, whistle, and know who your captains are. So your coach in their binder will have a red and yellow card. Okay? What I would do is I would tuck these in my waistband of my spandex or my sweatpants or whatever it is you have on. These are yellow is just your warning. Red is like, you're out, you're done, okay? Um, I don't know if any of my coaching I've ever, or we've ever had to give any of these, but these are like for obnoxious coaches. I haven't, you probably have. <laughs> parents. Parents are, yeah. So if you've got a parent that's incessantly yelling, 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 and they're being obnoxious, you are allowed to show them this card, okay? You are allowed to say, you know, this is your warning, okay? And if they continue, you can show them this red card. They've been warned. Red card. Then usually they have to leave the building or they deal with the tournament director. They do, and it's a point of issue. A point, yes. Yeah. Okay, so don't be scared to use these if you do have someone that is being absolutely ridiculous. Because it does happen. Yeah. It does As coaches, happen. you need to be with your team the whole time. So hopefully, like for younger groups, we have like a team mom, and one coach looking at that score sheet all the time, and then another coach. So both coaches are actively engaged in the officiating duties. So like Coach Page will be there with you guys. You know what I mean? So like if you have a situation where a yellow card is, is warranted, your coach is gonna help you make that decision. Does that make sense? Yes. So please, please don't walk away from your team for the simple fact that if you're not there and a parent starts yelling at them, you need to be there to help them out. Because as an 11-year-old, I was terrified if an adult was and that's at the 11 to 12, most of the time, it's, it'll be not, even sometimes 13, just to have one coach at the referee stand with them, one coach at the score table. That way, there's no question. Um, because even if you're 11 or 12, and we ask people to be patient, there are people that are not patient, and they want to get fired up, and it's not fair to the girls to have to deal with that. So that's where the coaches step in and help. Um, and there are spots when you do, and that'll cover that score card, that there's spots and stuff to mark on the score sheet. Okay. Um, questions on these? Don't be scared to use it. Yes, ma'am. So that's the only reason why you use those cards? Um, do we have? There's a lot of obnoxious things that people do. Anytime so. someone's being rude, it's like, here's your warning. Like the coach yeah. like, like when your mama says, well, count three. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. That's the yellow card. Yeah. Which gives the three, that's the red card. So <laughs> as coaches, as coaches, we are not allowed to address the reps. So we have to use our captains to do so. So like if you're my up official and I'm questioning a call that you made, I'm going to call my captain over and I'm going to say, hey, can you go ask them this question and explain to me why they made that call? So then I'm going to send my captain over to the up official and they're going to have that conversation. As coaches, we're not supposed to address the officials and you guys 
That's why we use our athletes to do so. But if you've got a coach that's yelling at you and they're being rude, you are allowed to give the coach that card too. And you can call your captain over, captain, come here. Mm -hmm. Tell your coach that they need to calm down, otherwise I'll issue a yellow card and then the captain go tell their coach uh, as well. You don't have to tell the coach, you know, and you talk to the kid, talk to the captain, the captain come here, you know, and let them know and then. I, pre -warning. I'm going to say, I think there was one time, and these were at the bigger tournaments, that you have actual up officials that are like with the USA Volleyball. Sometimes your coaches may get a yellow card or a warning if they're on the court, when like during a timeout, like timeouts have to be off the court. Or if you've got more than two coaches standing or something, you may get those warnings. Or uh, illegal substitution, like if I mm -hmm. try to use and I'm beyond my sub limit, and I'm like, sub, and then it's, you know, so yeah, like a we get up sometimes, yeah, for a delay of game. Mm -hmm. like Has any of our coaches got the red card? Red? Or yellow? Yeah. Yellow. Yellow. Yeah. yellow. Not for, for delay of game and stuff. <laughs> not to be <laughs> We try not to be those coaches. <laughs> it did happen. <laughs> All right, any questions? Okay. I'm just trying to pick up for my kids. All right, and also one of those things, as an up official, you've got your cards, you've got your whistle, you also are gonna be in charge of knowing who your captains are because only the captains are allowed to talk to you on the court. You can't just, like if number two is my captain, number nine isn't supposed to go over and talk to you. It's number two's job, okay? So your down official, when they check the lineups, they'll say two and they're gonna signal to your up ref and they'll do the little C that number two's the captain and it's your job to remember who those captains are on those sides, okay? Um, you're going to authorize to start the match. So the team begins on inline, and I'm sure it's gonna be a little bit different like with the shaking hands. I know it was in our high school season. Um, they didn't have anything on the modules about what our, our uh, opening game stuff is, like the shaking hands and stuff. I think it's going to be tournament director's discretion, and it's probably going to be fluid as the year goes. It might change. Right. So you normally, know. in a normal situation, the up up, you've got both teams on your inline. You're going to signal for them to come. They're going to run around. They're going to clap hands. They're going to say good luck. Um, you may have different variations where the teams are on the inline, and you wave them forward. They may come to the 10-foot line. You guys may wave and say good luck, and then the game's going to get going. And I, it, they change from tournament to tournament. So your coaches will keep you posted and we'll keep you posted on different, the different ways that can be. Either way, when you're on that up official, you're going to signal to start the game. You're going to have your hands, you'll come together, they'll clap, you'll shake hands, um, do whichever there. Um, so then your down ref will check your lineup and let you know who your captains are. They're going to signal who their captains are. Um, you're going to authorize first serve. So you have your first server. When you're going to authorize first serve, you are going to, like my team over here serving, you're going to blow your whistle. You're going to make this motion. Okay? You don't blow it and make the motion at the same time. So short, just little. You want to cover your ears real quick? And you're going to do that right here. That's your serve. So I want everybody to practice that real quick. Obviously, you don't have your whistle. And every whistle will blow it. Make that serve, nice. Okay? And dance on this side, you've got your serve. Okay? Now, don't just go like this. Don't be like, make it short and fast. Make it. Okay? Stiff arm. It's okay to go a little bit slower just because sometimes in the hustle and bustle of it, you don't hear the whistle. Okay? So there have been times that maybe they, they're like waiting for you to call it and you've already called it. So if you're going short from like here and they can't see you, it's okay to just kind of be a little slower with it. That way everybody knows that you've signaled for it to be okay to start. Okay? And try to be tall so your signals are up high. Don't go out here. Go yeah. up tall. Some of you guys are as tall as the net, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta get up high, sorry. <laughs> get up high, be tall, and hold and pause. One thing that you can, uh, a good little referee trick, is if somebody's chewing at you, like can they see it? Sorry, be tall, they have to see it, okay? If somebody's like chewing at you, just 
hold it, hold it longer. So they're like, ah, just hold it. So they stop talking and then side out. Does that make sense? But I'm gonna hold it, or you just hold it, I'm in, and they're barking at you, whatever, just hold it. Just look forward, they'll get the, the point pretty quick that, hey, I'm not changing the call. But if you look at them, address them, then they think they have a chance. Mm -hmm. Just ignore them. Does that make sense? Just hold it. Okay? But be tall. Be up here. Don't be little. Be big. And at the up breath, you get final say so. Like it's your call to make. So if you've got a parent argument, oh, that ball is in, blah, 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 you look at your line judges. If they're not 100, you can overrule your line judges' call. If they called it in, but you're like, ah, I'm pretty sure that ball was out, it is okay to call it out if you think it's out. That is your final decision. Okay, and we'll talk, we'll, we'll talk about the line judges in a second. Um, but when a point has been made, it's side out, it's, yes ma'am. Will we ever have like cameras and show the video and then like the Like instant replay? replay? When you play yeah. on the zoo, you will. <laughs> How the ball will. Yes, you will when you play at the zoo. Till then, no. <laughs> All right, so if it's a dead ball, okay, someone scored a point, whichever, you're gonna whistle, to indicate that the play is stopped. The play needs to stop. Because sometimes if it's a touch that happened and play starts, whatever, if it's a fault, you're gonna blow that whistle real loud and confident to end play. The ball needs to stop. You're gonna award the point. So if this side score, I'm gonna blow my whistle. I'm gonna call the ball over here, point over here, so that way my scorekeepers know points over here. And then if maybe they hit the ball inbounds, they gotta kill. I'm gonna point down, because the ball's down. That means, so. Blow your whistle, award the point, call the whatever it was, okay? If it goes out, if it was in, um, if they touched it, and we're gonna go over the, the hand signals here shortly, but so whistle, award your point, whichever side, and hold it for a second, that way everybody knows what side gets the point, and then make your call and what you're calling, okay? Uh, don't feel like you need to make your whistle at the moment of the fault. Like you can, like if you see, you know what I mean, but you don't have to time your whistle as it lands on the ground out of bounds or in bounds, right? So just whistle means stop the play, right? Then it's okay to pause, think, okay? Think in, with it out, award, like I think about like if I'm rolling the ball to the other side, who's gonna get it? Award the point and then show the fault. When you show this in fault, it's not really a point like this, it's a point like this, okay? And it's always like a 45 degree angle from my body, so it's always here, okay? It's never like in, 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 it's not that. <laughs> it's just here at 45 degrees, even if it's in over there. Does that make sense? Okay, so think about it, blow the whistle, think, pause, who gets the point, okay? And then in. tournaments and they have the R1, you'll be surprised how slow they are to make the call. Mm -hmm. They'll blow, process, and then they show stop. Okay, it takes a moment. Yeah, and so, it's, I mean, and everybody's going to make, they're going to make a mistake at some point and that's okay. So, like, if sometimes line judges, and I've been guilty of it when I line judge and I play, but if I may call it in and then I think about, ah, no, that ball was out. And that's okay to take that, okay, so just take that second Alright, um, ball handling faults. So you've got two hits, which is a double contact off setter, double contact when player uh, two hand sets over the net. So watch your contact, be certain of your call. Okay, so a double contact is if I'm setting the ball or something and like this hand touches it a little bit before this hand, so it's just that little bit of a double. Okay, and younger kids, sometimes it's really hard to tell. Okay, and it's going to happen in the younger age group ball, ball games. Okay, so biggest thing is if you're going to call double hits, double contacts, you have to be consistent for both teams. You can't look at this team and call double, 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 and then this team not. Okay, so just make sure you're consistent, and if this team doubles, you're calling it on this team if this team doubles. Okay, you guys all understand what double contact is. 
So just two contacts on the ball. Sometimes the two contact can be like it hits here and then it hits here. So bam, bam. Um, That's not a double. No, not anymore. Okay. No. So if you make one move to the ball, if I make one move, but it goes, it's just one. Okay. <laughs> I make one move. Okay. You just, yeah. It's, it's okay. Okay. So here, um, obviously they hit it twice, but most of the time doubles are on setters. Or if it's not a setter and it's someone trying to make an attempt on a set, because that happens. It does happen. So we're out of system. We're out of system, and someone's like, oh, I'm going to take this set. Yeah. You know, or the third contact over. Yeah. When we take it with our hands, off. it can't be a double. It's got to come out clean when we spend that third contact with our hands. Yeah. Yeah. Is there all, you, all you non setter setters, we call them that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is there anything you want to ask like, younger kids on calling doubles? Biggest thing is just being Still confident. The, Biggest thing is just being confident in that call. Okay? Because uh, it's going to happen. Doubles will get called. And if we get called on a double, don't get all huffy puffy. I didn't double that ball. It, you probably did. <laughs> you probably did. I knew it. You probably do it a lot. Yeah. You just don't call it. Um, and that's the other thing is you may go to some of our local tournaments and you've got our peers are repping. They may not call very many doubles. But if you go to a national qualifier or Memphis and some of our bigger tournaments where we've got up officials, they're probably going to call it. And that's where we get that, like, we get frustrated. Like, oh, I never get called before. It's probably a double, okay? Because they've been doing it a lot longer than what we have. Okay, so it's okay if you get called. Just try to fix it. Okay, just try to fix it. Um, yeah, double contact on first contact is okay. Lifts on first contact is a fault. So like if you're catching the ball down here and catching and throwing, that's a lift. Okay, so if it's a double, this would be your two contacts, okay? So like if I awarded this team a point because this team doubled, so point, and then I'm just gonna hold up two because this side doubled. So I know if this side doubled, I would hold up a fault over here, okay? A lift, the motion is this, like they lifted the ball, okay? So like catch and throws, um, I was gonna say most of the time you either Something like they grab a ball from yeah. behind, they're attacker and they're back here, and then they try to tip it, you know, and it goes past two planes, one plane to the second plane. That or if they're it. down here and they're trying to catch and throw the ball over the Setter, middle. if she's trying to dump with one hand, and she's it's outside of this plane, and she sets from here with one hand and goes over there, that would be a lift. You know, they have to be in their midline, and then they can set. So this is a, a this, lift? And you're trying to go that way? Yeah. So, you know what planes are? You know, like horizontal planes, yeah. vertical planes. So if I'm here and I grab a ball from here and it travels from plane one to plane two, I go left. Does that make sense? But if I'm over here and I tip, then we're good. That's why your coaches but, tell you to reach when you make contact with the ball. Yeah. Okay. You can't grab a ball back here, right? Mm -hmm. And then throw it over. Yeah. So head throw lifts are always a fault. Always a fault. And when you do that, you will probably have people argue with you on that call. If you make that call, there's always usually somebody that's, that wants to argue. Maybe parents, and, oh, what was that bad call, whatever. Ignore them and be confident in your call. Okay, because most of the time coaches know. The coaches are like, yeah. They may not like the call made, but they're, okay. So just be confident in that call if you do call that. Um, so, and I'm gonna go over hand signals once we go over all of it, just to reiterate that part. So serve, 15 to 18, you have eight seconds to serve the ball. So if you have, you know, your little jump serves that you like to do, you got a little bit of time to do it. 12 to 14, you have five seconds. So if you're up on that rest stand, obviously most people don't count one, two, three, four. But if it seems like it's taken a long time, you know, it may be something that you get in the habit of just kind of trying to count and see how long five seconds actually is to serve. But just be conscious that they're taking like 20 seconds back there they're bouncing the ball a thousand times. Because it happens. There's always somebody that's got their little serving quirks. Um, but, if, you know, if they're taking one at five seconds, you can blow that whistle and it's the other team's ball. Okay? Um, but, like I said, 15 to 18, you have eight seconds. 12 to 14, you've got five. 
Okay, but remember you've got the reserve from 12 or 11 up to, um, I'm assuming 11 would be the same, wouldn't it? 10 you, 11 you, probably the same with five seconds. Yeah, okay. Um, out in touch antenna. So, let's actually, I think this will go over a few things. So, if it's out, you're up here. So, we're going to do this up high. My high, big, tall posture. So, this is out. Okay? If you're an up official, yep. if you're an up official, all right, you can put your hands down. If you're an up official, you're not using both hands to call in. Okay, you look goofy. So if I'm here, I, I'm calling in. If it's in on this side, like Coach Julie says, that 45 degree angle, we're going to point down. We're not trying to reach and tell us where it was in. We're just in. Okay, so either side, in. Okay, just point that hand down. Okay, so if you want to practice that, if you wanted to see, make sure you can do it. And be firm with it, okay? Don't have a, like a loose arm, be firm. Okay, this one I want you guys to practice. So, say the ball goes over and this person shanks and it goes out. That's called a touch. Okay, so ball's out on a touch. You're going to hold your hand like this, palm facing you. You'll take... This hand, palm facing out, and it'll go up. Okay, so it's up. A lot of us like to go like this sometimes, but this. Okay, so try it on both sides. I know it kind of feels awkward on the opposite side. Yeah, be both ways, be both ways. I was doing it wrong. I was doing it wrong. I was like, wait a second. And you're, you'll do it backwards. You will. Make sure that. Sometimes you have things like that. You guys are going to be like that. Okay, if you're in the up rep and the ball hits the antenna, okay, ball hits the antenna and it would be considered an out ball. Okay. You're not touching the net because that would be like your net call. If it touches the antenna, it's just out. Okay, it's out on the side that sends it into the antenna. Okay, you got it? So if it's out of bounds normally, or if it touches the antenna, you've got this signal. The line judge points mm -hmm. to the antenna and waves your five.
as an R1, so let's say something happens, whether it's in or it's out or a touch, or maybe it was a block touch, and anyway, so if I'm here, I blow the whistle, I end the play, but it's okay to pause because you do need to look at those line breaks, mm -hmm. right? What if they have a set touch, they're up here, then you're gonna have to make sure that you evaluate that. So that pause, blow the whistle to end the play, but I need to see those line judges, right? Especially on some of those iffy plays, then you can make your call, or you can make your call touch. Okay, so that little pause is gonna really come in handy for you guys. All right, out of rotation or wrong server. Um, it's usually gonna be the same call. Okay, and so if you're out of rotation. Now, the person that keeps up with rotations would be your down rep, so they would signal that, hey, this is what's wrong. You're just kind of making that call up top because people see you. Okay? Uh, back row attack, back row block, or over the net. So, back row attack. So, if my libero goes and tries to hit in front of the 10-foot line, or one of my back row players tries to hit in front of the 10-foot line, um, it would call a back row attack. It'd be one of these calls. Okay? So, they jumped over... Or you can jump behind the line and land in front of the line, but if you jump in front of that line, um, then it's a back row attack. Or if your setter is a back row setter and they jump and take the ball over trying to take that setter tip, um, that would be again back row attack. Um, so that call is for those three. Antenna, we talked about just call out. If they make contact four times, you just hold up four because it happens. Let's talk about that back row attack, yeah. All right, back to our line. This side's our side. Finally faces our side. Okay, so. If I jump here and land here, am I okay? No. Yes. Yes. See that? Okay. So if I jump from behind the line and land in front of the line, we're okay, right? If I jump and my foot hits it the line just a little bit, is that okay? No. Violation or no violation? Touched it a little bit. That's a 10 foot line. Back row attack or no? Yes. Back row attack. Okay, that would be a violation. So that is sad face, not okay. Okay? So you can't touch the line at all as you jump on a back row attack. You guys see that? Sad, ooh, that's happy face. Sad face <laughs> down there. Go. And so that's the other important part of the, um, the up official. And you're gonna have people miss it. The coaches, you're gonna, have, you're gonna notice it sometimes and the up official will not, is that maybe that setter was from back row or things are from back row and they don't call it. Okay, you may say, like, you may motion for that. Maybe the next time they'll watch for it a little closer. But sometimes you're gonna have people miss that call. That oh hey, that person was in the back row and they just hit it over that ten foot line. Okay, or they jumped, or their setter took the ball over, but they're from back row. Yes, ma'am. Is that thing like getting on the end line, like you touch it after you contact it? Is that bad or not? Same same rule for serve. Mm -hmm. So if you jump serve, same rule. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's well. That was a good point. So like on foot faults, your server can land on the line if they're jump serving. They just have to, they can't jump on the line or above or in front of the line when they're jump serving. They have to leave the ground behind that end line, but they can land in front or on it. Okay? And that happens sometimes. That's just something you gotta watch. Because sometimes you have about this much room to serve. And it's not happening. Okay, so let's talk about back row attacks and libero. Can I add that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so Libero's, uh, if, they're, if they're jumping and swinging and, and their attack has what's called a downward trajectory, that's a back row attack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so some of you little squirts are going to be okay as Libero's hitting balls still. But 13, 14 Libero's, you're probably not going to be able to do any like jump and then swing. It'll have to make sure everything, if you're making it, it'll be a down ball. Does that make sense? So if a Libero has a downward motion, it'd be considered a back row attack because you can't utilize a libero as part of an offense. Does that make sense? Okay, I don't want to put Katie St. John in my libero and have her have her banging balls. So they're trying to prevent us, try, like volleyball coaches, 
to cheat, cheat the system. So you know what I mean? So we gotta make sure that it's always below the high of the net, okay? The other thing with the libero is when um, they take that second contact. So when we go with our left back uh, libero spot, we're gonna have them be the, sec the second contact when setter takes first ball, right? The libero comes in and they make that platform pass. We've been training you guys with the platforms, right? Okay, so I'm here and I have backward pass or I have forward pass high to that pin, okay? If I do platform, then I don't have to worry about the 10 foot line ever, okay? So that's how we're, why we're teaching you guys. If that ball is in front of the 10 foot line and the libero takes what's considered a fingertip action in front of that 10 foot line, then the attacker has the down ball. If the attacker jumps, that's a back row attack. So a libero's gotta come in with that platform most of the time because I can go above the 10 foot line or beyond the 10 foot line and I'm okay. Attackers can still jump and swing. But if a libero comes in and they take it with their hands, okay, then that attacker has to down ball it over. So at that point, your teammates are like, down, 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 stay down, stay down, and you have to down ball it over. That makes sense? On the setters, Okay, on the back row attack, some of you little kids, okay, can get by with a jump and a tip if you're back row because you're lower than the, the, the horizontal plane of the net. So if I have the net here, there's a horizontal plane here. So if I'm below it and I jump, then you're good, okay? But as you get bigger and taller, so that any part of that ball breaches that horizontal plane, then it's a back row attack, okay? So that goes for like, if I don't jump. So what if I'm a tall setter, okay? If I'm a tall setter and I'm still above the plane, I don't need to be tipping and, and, and going, okay? All right, any other questions? Good? So it's gotta be so like a barrel and out. Yeah, so like if you've got yeah. someone yeah, that's that hops and they're making contact and oh. that ball is a put down, then that would be like the So like if the whole time it's yeah. If they hit the ball, like if they hit up here, like we talked about the like little ones, like little Alexa, kids. she's not gonna be able to jump in the back row. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's too athletic, she's too high up in that, downward trajectory in the back row, yeah. Because a lot of times our younger ones are more, yeah. they're down. Right? They're a little rainbow, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, any questions about back row attacks? Are we good? Sub, 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 
You don't call it until that person's up there. Coach okay. saying sub does not mean sub. <laughs> like, good for you, coach. It's not helping anybody. It doesn't matter. Okay? <laughs> All that matters is that that kid breached that 10 foot line. When that kid comes beyond that 10 foot line, it's a sub. So he can be yelling sub, 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 and he's like, I called sub. I'm like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the sub is when you go beyond that 10 foot line. But everyone says sub because it's just kind of like nice. It reminds the kid to go up. Mm -hmm. and, and it used to be that way, like the coach had to yell sub. But like for us, you guys are gonna have predetermined subs. So you're just gonna go. Coach isn't gonna tell you to sub. You're gonna know that you're playing front row for this person and you guys just go because that's our lineup, that's our plan. And, and no, so you just go, you know? I'm not telling my kids to sub. If you forget to sub, you snooze, you lose. Yep. Okay? Yeah, I get to play back row. <laughs> so, unless it's like, yeah. Right. Uh, so again, those are, those are things that are too, the down ref will call you, just copy the motions. Don't blow your whistle because they've already blown theirs, okay? Uh, the R2 will tell you game points. So if this guy has 18 points, they were full play, if 19 is the winning point, this team has 18. They're going to hold up, this is the down ref, is gonna hold up this number to let the up official know, hey, it's game point. Same thing on this side. So whatever side, is game point, you would hold that, that little symbol up here. The up rep, do not repeat this. This is not your call, like you don't have to repeat it. Okay, this is just the down rep, just hey, a reminder, just nod your head and, and recognize that you saw it, okay? Uh, but you don't have to hold this up. Excuse me. Uh, do you have to win by two? Most times, yes. I thought it was to 25. Pool play is usually to 19, and then you get into bracket play. So you'll play pool play, you'll play three or four games in pool play, and then depending on how you did pool play, they'll put you in a bracket. And when you get to bracket play where you're trying to play for first place, then you would go to games to 25. It just depends on the tournament. The big tournaments will always be two out of three to 25, mm -hmm. um, but the local tournaments a lot of times like two sets to 19 in pool play, and they might have a different format um, for the, the playoff part. But you'll just have to read the tournament uh, paper will be like on the score table. So you guys will be able to read the rules and how many points for each set. So and, some, and some tournaments have caps, which means like you can't score over this, this many points. Okay. So like if the cap is 19, you can't, like and it's 18, or 18, 18, whoever gets to 19 first would win. Uh, but again, like Coach Julie said, that will be outlined in your tournament directions and things like that. So we like that. Um, uh, after every play, look at your down ref to make sure they are ready to go because your down ref will be checking with the score table, making sure they're good, they've got all their stuff, they're going to look at you, and usually that symbol or that hand signal that they'll give you is this, okay? They'll look at you, your score table down ref will look at you guys, and you'll go like this, and that just lets the up ref know we're ready to go, you can blow for sure, okay? Yeah, score table is going to be top, but let their pens down top. Pens down, they go up. Pens down, they go up. So you gotta make sure your kids are ready to go. Because that score sheet is pretty intense. Okay, so you gotta make sure that you don't go too fast for them. Yep. Because especially if somebody's out of line, or out of their rotations, and then you need that extra time. Um, when you make calls, make them high in front of your face so both sides may see. So if it's out, you're up here. You know, if it's in, things like that. Um, timeout. You're gonna mimic the R2 signal. The R2 will time 30 seconds. So timeouts are 30 seconds. Um, at the end of the timeout, the R2 will signal to the R1 how many each team has remaining. So then your up rep will hold up fingers to signal remaining timeouts for each team. So if this, you get two timeouts per, per set. So if this team called a timeout, but this team hasn't had any, the, da the down rep is going to let you know. So this team's used one, or they have one left, this team has both, or both left, sorry, I'm backwards, the yeah. is different. Yeah. Um, they've got one left, they've got two left. So you're just gonna mimic that, okay? That way everybody knows. Uh, so like if this team used both of their timeouts and this team has both of their still left, so you're gonna hold up none, they have no more left, they have two left. Does that make sense? So hold up how many they have left or how many they have remaining. So this is at the end of the game. So end match, so game's over.
you are going to blow your whistle to end the play. You're going to blow your whistle once, tell the teams to go back, blow your whistle a second time to cross over. Okay. If it's in between sets, this is a little different. Okay. So you'll blow your whistle once, back, and then you're going to go like. They don't have. You do. You will make that motion, but they don't have to go around us. Right. So like you'll still make this motion in between sets, mm -hmm. this motion in between sets. But remember how we used to have to like go around the opposite pole? Yeah. So one went around this pole, one went around this way. You guys were always like, go around, go around, all that, right? They eliminated. Both teams just go to the bench. And then if we are switching sides this year, then you just switch sides in front of the score table. But we might not even be switching sides this year. We might just stay on our one side. That makes sense, but we'll still make that motion because it's in between. Okay. So that puts everybody at the end line. Um, you either rotate sides or in line. Right. Things over. So yeah. maybe we don't have to make that motion. It didn't say anything in my reference. If they're just going to their benches, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to just wait and see. <laughs> right? That was the test that didn't work. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Maybe it'll tell you on your test. Yeah. You let me know. We'll double check yeah, that one. Uh, I know a lot, but I don't know it all. You will thank your down refs, your scorekeepers. You're going to check the scores and make sure they're correct. And then there's a spot for the up official to sign the score sheet. So before you leave, you have to make sure that you sign that score sheet. Okay? Alright, so that's the up ref. Anybody have any questions over up ref? We're going to move down to our down rev or R2, or second referee. So, your job is really to pay attention to your score table. So, you need to make sure that they're all good, and that's when you're going to check in with them to see at each point. Make sure they're all good. You give your hand signal to your up rev. The other thing, you need to make sure you pay attention to your up rev because the calls that they make are something you'll need to repeat as well. When they make the call, there are certain ones that you'll call. Um, you do not blow your whistle. Okay, on like if the up rep calls the point or, or things like that in or out, you don't have to blow your whistle. You just mimic what the up rep is doing. So if the up rep, the ball get hit, gets hit out and they award this team the point, they're up, you're just going to mimic that. So you're going to go to the side that scored the point, kind of like put your hand, mimic. Okay? So I'm going to go R1 signals, except the serve signal. Okay, you don't have to let that server know they're serving. That's, that's when you don't have to mimic. Okay? Uh, during the serve, you're going to stand on the serve receive side, the side that's getting the serve of the pole. So, as the down rep, you're going to switch sides as you go. Okay? Because you have to watch the net. Your job is watching the net, watching that center line. If you're not watching the ball, you're watching the net in the center line to make sure no one's making illegal net violations and then the illegal crossing over that center line. You'll move to the blocking side. Yes. So ah, we'll move to the blocking side. So as the attack happens, you'll move to the black blocking side. You'll watch the net and you'll watch the blocker's hand. Mm -hmm. The blocker's hand. So watch the ball. Watch the blocker's hands because oftentimes the ball clears and then there's a net violation. Or the ball clears and it, or you can see the, the ball hit the, the blocker's hand. So as an attacker on this side, then I'm going to be on this side looking at those blocker's hands and seeing the, the play. Let the play happen. Watch the blockers land so I can see those pattern violations. And then I can track the play again. Because don't I have line judges? Aren't they checking in and out? So that I can pay attention to the blocker's hands and the net and then let the play end, and I still have my eyes at that net, and then I can go find and track the play. But I have to watch that in its entirety, because the R1 has to watch all of it. R2 hawkeyes that net, okay? Before, during, and after the attack of the ball, okay? So, so this, this side serving, I'm gonna be on this side, and I'm gonna be watching if anybody's overlapping on serve receive. So sometimes maybe our setters pull up over here and my, they're still in back rows, so they're pulled so they can't overlap the person to their left or the person in their right in their back row. So they have to make sure that no one's overlapping each other. 
um, because then if they do, we would call out of rotation. Okay, sometimes our setters like to leave before that contact made. Okay, so that would be something you're watching for too when you're watching that server seed side. So then they make the pass, then you're going to be moving over to that blocking side, watching that net, and then you'll alternate whichever side's blocking. You'll be moving back and forth. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so watch the net, call net fault. So you're going to watch that center line and call center line violations, which we went over. Your whole foot has to be over that center line for you to call it. Um, for the net, you have to be in the net while you're making a play on the ball for it to be a net violation. Um, so check lineups and use the lineup sheet before set and indicate who the captains are to the up rep. So each team, and this is also a job duty as we call our captains meetings, it's important that you make sure both coaches get a lineup sheet. Okay? So they're going to write their lineup when the game starts, or like as we're getting our lineups are out on the court, you're going to go around and you're going to check. So you've got your six zones on the court. You're going to check who are certain, like who's this person. You're going to go around and make sure they're in the spot that they need to be to be in. If they have a libero, once you have your lineup checked, you can motion to that libero. Hey, you can go in, okay, um, on either side. So check this side. You'll check this side, and you're going to kind of look at who the captain is. Your coaches have to mark a C by what number the captain is. So if number two over here is my captain, after I check the lineup, I'm going to look at my up breath and do number two and then do a seat for captain, okay, on both sides. If a coach doesn't have a captain written down, make sure you go and ask, hey, who's your captain, okay? Coaches, make sure that you have your C written down, make sure you have your liberos. If you don't have any liberos, you could have two little X's here that indicates that no liberos are being used, okay? Now that can change from set to set, and, we'll, and that can be different. But if there's one libero, sometimes you may have teams that have two liberos. So, and that, you'll get into scorekeeping, and that's their job to help keep up with that and let you know and communicate that. Okay, but once that libero goes in and out, you guys, the liberos go in behind the 10-foot line. So the libero can't come up and cross in front of that 10-foot line because then that, that would be where your sub zone is. Okay, just make sure that libero goes in and out behind that 10-foot line. Do not lean against the pole. We are not going to be lazy and lean here and watch. And we're going to make sure that we are paying attention and we are assertive reps. Okay, we're going to be confident. But if you've got somebody that's leaning here and slouching, if you make a call, do you think parents are going to argue if you're being lazy? Okay, probably so. But if you're here and you're paying attention and you're showing that you're you're paying attention, you're probably not going to have people question your call as much. Okay, because you're looking like you're into the game. Okay, and we don't want to be that team that, like, oh my gosh, you see those pursuit kids? No, we want to be the best of the best, and that even isn't officiating as well as on the court. Okay, so let's hold ourselves accountable on that. Um, do not call for a sub until the sub enters the sub zone. Um, like I said, the coach can call a sub, and you do not need to blow your whistle until they enter the sub zone. Timeout. Timeouts are 30 seconds. You're going to let the R1 and coaches know how many timeouts they have left at the end of the timeout. So if this coach has called one timeout at the end of it um, and they're going back on the court, you're going to say, hey, coach, you have one timeout left. Okay, same thing over there. This coach ha doesn't, hasn't used any. Hey, coach, you still have both of your timeouts left. So it's important that we're communicating with our coaches and our up reps, letting them know how many timeouts they have. Yes, ma'am. How many timeouts do each team have? Two per set. The two 30 second timeouts. Okay, and your scorekeepers are going to help you keep up with that because there's a little spot on your score sheet that they'll mark what timeouts they've used and things like As that. As a player, when your coach calls a timeout, the R1 is going to start that that clock immediately. So if they blow the whistle, boom, that clock is starting. So as a player, I might want to tell my team some awful good stuff. I want to compliment them and brag on them, and then they all block to me. They walk, and they walk, and they walk, and then I realize that I have about seven seconds to tell them anything, okay? Because the referee will blow a 10-second warning, so that they're going to go, whoop, start the clock, and then at 20 seconds, they're doing the 10-second warning for my timeout. So please, hear the timeout, run to your coach so they can maximize that timeout. It's really frustrating as a coach if my team is walking to me because I want to tell them all the things 
I want to tell them all the good things. And then I'm like, okay, I want to tell them good stuff, but then they walk, and then I yell at them for walking, and then it like ruins all the good stuff that I wanted to tell you. That make sense? All right, so run to coach, because it's not very much fun. Yeah, 30 seconds is quick. Um, head coaches can only talk to the down row. So you may have a coach say, hey, can I get a lineup check? Meaning maybe like, I don't know if that's the right server. Okay, so you can ask the down ref that. At that point, they're going to communicate with the scorebook and they're going to look and make sure that you are in rotation. You may have that happen where someone's like, I don't know if that's the right server. Can I get a check? Okay, and those are those things that the head coach can talk. They can't talk to the up ref or the score table. Now your captain, coach may have a captain go talk to the up ref, but the down ref is that person that communicates with the coach and then goes to the score table. So coaches can't go over and be like, blah, 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 blah. Now there may be situations where um, the scorebook gets a little messed up and they have pulled coaches into like, hey, can you look at this too? Most of the time the coach that's with their team should be there and helping and try to limit that happening. But there are situations that they're like, hey, I mean, I know I've, I've had to help look at a scorebook before at a tournament. It, it happens. But most of the time that, that down or the head coach is going to ask you for a lineup check or, hey, do I have the right server? Hey, how many timeouts do I have? Okay. But that really should be the only communication that that coach has with you. If they're yelling at you, you got to yell apart. Okay. You're allowed to use it. Questions on that part? R2 tells the R1 at set point, so R2, this is your job when it comes to that game point. You're going to step over to the side, put that one up, like so this side is game point on this side, we we'll put that up there. In R1, you don't have to repeat that, just nod your head and acknowledge that you saw it, okay? Um, you're going to make sure that your score table's ready, two hands up to the R1, so you've got your flat hands up. Score table, you'll be giving that signal as well. Um, when you make calls, make them high in front of your face so both sides may see. Questions on down ref? Thank you, and Adam. Oh, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Um, Line judges. All right, you're always going to give signals with both hands and emphasis. So if you don't have a flag, you're using your hands in, out, you got your touch. Okay, if you see a touch off the blocker's hands that maybe the referees didn't see, you're, you can be like, hey, I saw a touch. Okay, you're allowed to make that call as well. Okay, so it's important for you to watch the line and not the ball. A lot of times as line judges, it's really, really easy to be watching the ball and you follow the ball. What you need to be doing, so if you have a line here and a line here, that ball's going out, you're watching the line to see if that ball, does that ball touch that line? Does that ball touch the line? It's in, right? If that ball's outside of the line, then it's out. It's really easy to watch the ball and go, ah, I don't know. That was close. If they're completely cross step, like if you're saying like if the ball goes under and they're diving to get it, it's usually okay because they're not completely on the other side, so the yeah. body's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Now if they're uh, under a blocker's foot, then it's a center line yeah. violation because it's safety. a safety and danger. But one thing on that line judge is we want to when Bailey was trying to explain it. When I watch that line, you have to take your eye off the ball. Mm -hmm. And you have to watch that zone. So you're like, okay, that ball's probably gonna be close. Take your eye off the ball and watch the line. Then the ball will enter into that zone and go, and then you'll be able to see it. Okay, so it's eye sequence, understanding what to look at when. Okay, so okay, that ball's gonna be close. Find the line, let the ball enter into my vision so I can see it. Literally laid it in, it touched a little bit, it touched a little bit on the outside or wherever it went. But if you just watch the ball, you're not gonna see it, okay? You're not gonna see it, you gotta watch the line, the ball comes into that zone, okay? The other thing is, you wanna make sure, like you're obviously not on the court, but you've got where those lines meet. You've got one foot on each corner, okay? We're not 10 feet off the line, we're up here by the court. Now, obviously, someone's running towards you. Get out of the way. Okay? You get out of the way. Uh, but you need to be up there so you can see the lines. If I'm off, it's going to be harder for me to keep that view that I need. Okay? Uh, you're going to call it in or out, even if it's obvious. It could be at the back wall, but you still need to make that call that it's out. Okay? So, even if the referee's in, it's out, if you touch, football, you're calling everything, even um, and that also helps us stay engaged because sometimes line judging, it's not always the most thrilling job. Okay? And 
I've seen a lot of line judges just kind of back here watching, and then they like you get looked at like, hey, did you see it? And we weren't caught paying attention. Do they still call if it's on the other team's side? You call for your lines. Okay. So whatever line you're responsible for, you're gonna call. Okay. Uh, so because if it's all the way on the back line on the other side of the court, you may see it out, but you don't have the best judgment on that. Sometimes your R1 will look at you. So even if it's on that far back end line, it's not your line. R1 might look at you to see if there was a touch yep. Sorry. off the blocker's hand. So then you'll still say out. Yep. That makes sense that that R1 is looking for you to make that call, whether it's a touch or not. And sometimes your up rep may look at you and disagree with you and make a different call, and that's okay. Okay, it's okay if they overrule you. So don't get upset. Like, okay, you didn't, you didn't like my call. You saw something different. That's their call to make. You can always run up to your R1 mm -hmm. and talk to them too. Yep. Like if you saw something and that play all happened and you saw something and the play's over, go run up, talk to your R1. Is there able to be like two four plays happening? Like if someone was overriding like the other team and like Like two violations in one rally, you would go with the first violation. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even if it didn't get called, so let's say there was a lift, and then there was a line violation, and then the rally just kept going, and then it was the ball was done. We would just go with that first violation for the call. That's a great question. Yeah. All right. So you've got your in call, and you got a flag. You point in. If it's out, you would point your flag up like it's out. You want to be very confident with that. And sometimes it's fun to flip that flag up and be dramatic with it because the the gateway refs are flip it down, flip it up. Um, you're pretty confident with those calls because if you're like, mm, I think it was in, you're probably not the best, like it's probably not best to go with your call because you weren't sure. So it's very important to make sure we're paying attention, okay? Uh, if you don't see something, like maybe you're out of position, because sometimes it happens, like if you're calling this line and there's a bunch of players running for this ball that kind of crowd that line and you can't see and the up rep looks at you, um, it's okay to just kind of wave in front of your eyes like, I didn't see it. Okay, uh, don't just guess. Don't make a guess. Okay, because that's when people stop trusting some of your some of your calls. Okay, so if you can't see it, just kind of put your hands in front of your eyes like I didn't see. Don't be like this because I just know I've been in a situation where somebody went like this and they called it out, but they're really that person was saying I don't know. Just say I didn't see it. Okay, does that make sense for everybody got that one? So in, out, foot fault, you're gonna point to that line. Wave, you got a flag, wave your flag. Okay, we got our touches. Okay, I'm doing that fast. <laughs> um, let's see. Make calls right away, stay and make the call, then shag the ball. So, play it in, make sure you hold it because sometimes maybe the up rep looked over here first and they didn't see your call or whatever. Hold it, let them see it, then go run out. Um, when you make a call, make eye contact with the up rep. So when you make that call, if you're calling it in, make sure you are waiting and making sure you see that up rep if they looked at you. Okay, and up rep, make sure you look at your line judges. Um, during a timeout, you're going to stay on the inline in the middle back of the court to wait until the timeout is over. Um, if you're on the side that's serving and you've got the ball, you just need to hold it. So if you've got your inline and you're at your corner, then call a timeout. You're just going to kind of walk over to the center and just stand here patient, okay? And so that 30 second timeout, if you have the ball, just hold it. We're not bouncing it, we're not playing with it, just hold it, and then when they come back onto the court, you can kind of roll it over to your server. Um, you're gonna line judge the entire set. We're not flip-flopping line judges in the middle of the set, okay? I prefer the whole match. I, I do too, I usually have But I think the rule is for set. Because you want it to be a consistent officiating crew for the entire match, right? Um, so just rotate. I know that like, you guys like to switch because it's long. Sometimes you, sometimes you need to because you don't have a lunch break. And that's okay, so there's some exce exceptions. But overall, I'd like it to be the whole match. I think it's just a little bit more streamlined. Uh, during an attack, watch the blocker team for touches. So that was that. So if it hits the blocker's hands and goes out and the line judge is looking at you and you saw it touch, make sure you're letting them know, hey, they touched it and it's out on the minute. Okay. Um, during a potential in or out line call, do not watch the ball, watch the line. We talked about that. 
Um, we talked about in, out, you've got your touch, football. If it's antenna and out of bounds, I'm going to say, did you get a point and wave? So point and wave, okay? That, mm -hmm. Hey, it touched the antenna. Or, hey, sometimes it crosses outside the antenna. So if this is my antenna and the ball goes out and back over into the court, it happens. That's your job to help watch for that too, because as a down official and up official, sometimes those angles are hard to see. Okay, so that's that line judge's job to watch that line. Hey, did the ball cross inside the antenna or outside? If it touches the antenna or it's outside, make sure you point, wave, let them know that it was out. Okay, so that's questions on any of this. Okay, do you want to add anything before we? Hey, first of all, thank you guys for listening. I know it was long, and I know uh, it's it's a lot of information because it covers so many different areas. The R1, R2 the line judge, okay? So with that, with you guys being certified as referees, you're gonna be doing all three of those, those roles, right? So thank you guys for paying attention, thank you for being great. Um, one thing that we, uh, as pursuit, like we get lots of compliments on how well we do our officiating crew with our referees and our scorekeepers, and that goes right back to you guys understanding the importance and understand that, hey, I'm gonna take this serious, if you're anything like me, like I just want to do the best I can do in everything that I do. Like everything that I do, whether it's going to be a coloring sheet, I'm going to get the best coloring sheet ever. You know what I mean? So I love that you guys as well take it seriously and do a great job. So what we're going to do, take a time out, go to the restroom if you need to, stretch your legs a little bit. We're going to be back in 10, and we're going to have you guys get on Wi-Fi and log in your sports engine.
Once you're on 